order at 515, upon which the board immediately went into executive session. Please stand and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any motion for the approval of the agenda, which includes the agenda to the agenda and the superintendent's agenda items 6, 12, 13, and 14, and under the personnel consent agenda 1C, 2B, WXYZ, AA, and 4A, and other Board of Education business 3 and 4. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Commissioner? Aye. Mr. McCurry? Aye. And Mrs. Weiss? Aye. I need a motion for the approval of the minutes. So moved. Any comments or questions? Corrections? Right. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. McCurry? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. And Mr. Commissioner? Aye. Uh, all right. Virtual meeting protocol. Mrs. Weber. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. Um, we are um, in a virtual setting this evening, as we have been for uh, the last year or so. Um, welcome all of you who are joining us this evening virtually. One of the things we have posted, um, and we had this up prior to the meeting, is the area within the Board of Education website where you can access the agenda for this meeting. Um, and once minutes are approved from past meetings, those are posted on that same page. Um, we have asked that those who would like to participate in public participation, send their request to today's moderator, Chad Lewis. His email is shown on the screen, lewisc at sycamoreschools.org. Um, public participation is gonna uh, occur in about five or so minutes. So um, after we have a few other presentations, so we ask that you get th those requests to us soon. Um, if those requests, refer to an item that is on the board's agenda this evening. We'll hold your request until we get to that item and we'll ask you to participate at that time once the board has had their discussion. So um, I think that is it. Uh, when we get to that point, Mr. Lewis, we will find out if you have any public participation requests. I did not have any prior to the meeting as per the instructions that we have on the website, but we still have an opportunity for those who might be out there to provide um, a, a request to participate. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Mrs. Weber. All right, um, this evening we have some representatives from our Sycamore Classified staff that would like a moment with the board. So I'd like to welcome Becky Taylor and Diane Friel. Hi, my name is Diane Friel, and I'm the current OPC president. Dear valuable board members, it is with our deepest gratitude that we are reaching out to you today to express our appreciation for your most recent generosity. We can't thank you enough for the stipend that you're going to provide to us and to the entire staff, especially the classified employees this coming August. It was a very busy year for the classified staff who spent a lot of extra hours making sure students had meals, computers, virtual books and supplies, daily communications, and especially those who worked tires tirelessly to get our buses and buildings ready to open during a most challenging time. The classified staff were ready to start the school and greet each student with a happy face. The reality that our schools could possibly close and go completely virtual was a very scary thought. We knew our jobs were on the line and we were willing to face the challenges ahead to make sure schools would open safely for the benefit of our students. We, the most recent OPSI presidents, can't remember one time all year long where the classified staff didn't step up to the plate. Every time a call or an email went out asking for help and assistance, they were there. They never left a situation shorthanded. The frontline employees made a tremendous impact on the school's opening and they exceeded our expectations. We couldn't be more proud of their efforts. Thanks again for your generosity. Sincerely, with gratitude. <laughs> the entire Thank classified staff. staff. Thank you. I'm not to get emotional. 
very emotional year. Thank you so much for coming here and taking time out of your thank you. Thank you again. Your thanks, and we would like to say thank you to you again for all of your efforts and all the classified staff efforts on this past year has really been challenging and we all pulled together. So thank you so much. Yeah, I would certainly like to echo um, Mrs. Weiss's comments. You know, as we looked over the course of this year, other school districts across the nation are struggling to, you know, figure out how to stay remote versus actually being in school and being engaged. Um, you know, the classified staff was there from day one when we were in August to figuring out what is it going to take to, you know, change all the protocols within the buildings. And then, as you mentioned, for the rest of the year, just executing, executing, executing. So I think it was just a testament to the you know the fortitude and the culture and the type of people that are underneath your organizations just to do that really exemplary and different from what we saw in a number of other you know uh, three other school districts across the nation I mean, you guys are really leading examples so thank you very much thank you for saying that yeah i would just like to add my thank you to the entire organization as well truly a team effort from top to bottom we couldn't have done it without you and your team members you played vital roles in every aspect of our students' education. Um, and just the fact that you showed up for work every day um, and continue to work with us as a team to really get us all the way through the school year. It was a remarkable feat. Um, you know, it's something that I think our entire community is proud of, the fact that you know, we were able to keep our schools open. And, and that is in part thanks to all of, the, of your staff. So um, thank you, and I wish all of your staff a fantastic summer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll add, once the decision was made to come back to school, we didn't hear any negative comments from the classified staff. You guys were all there unanimously ready to serve our kids. You are the backbone of what it is to have a school district. If our kids can't get to school, there's no school. So um, I know you're the primary contacts for many parents in the district, the, the people that you, we, we, as parents, that we engage with. So. Thanks for keeping our kids safe through this, and thanks for coming to work. Really we were it. happy to do so. <laughs> so. And have a great summer. Thank you. you know, we, we, I just want to pile on the thank yous, but the, 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 the theme I would have is every single person is valued, right? Every single person. We're all on the home team here at Sycamore, and I really think it's important that when, you know, when you Character is revealed during adversity. And I think um, couldn't be prouder of the entire organization in Sycamore for pulling together and delivering this year. So thank you very much. I will add that while we are here to convey our thank you and gratitude from the classified staff, because that's who we represent. We do know that the decisions from the board, the administration, the teachers' willingness to come to work, and everyone else involved is, is a huge step in making sure that our school district open because we just feel like, you know, kids get that better education face to face. They needed that um, social skills and all the pieces that go with it. And we were happy, happy to come to work every day and provide that service from our side. So we know that the decisions weren't always tough on your end. And, you know, there was a lot of flack at the beginning and a lot of changes, but we were happy to be here. Absolutely. So thank you for all your efforts and all the, the craziness that you all went through to keep our year going. So. Thank you. Thank you for protecting us because, you know, your your work, Becky, I know you, you had to keep things clean. You had to keep things organized. You had to do extra efforts, the bus drivers on buses, you know, working with kids, serving food and being directly connected to kids, working with our most needy students, and those students depend on those educational assistants, the clerical staff, you know, missing their kids and not being able to be connected to kids. It's just, you know, I, I think about what it was like last summer and what it's like this summer. I'm so thankful that we got through it together. We're better together. Um, Absolutely. And just so thankful that, you know, it's nice to be able to hug you all again and uh, <laughs> hug, hug some of the people at the compounds and in the, the buildings, but it, it will be great to see everyone at the start of next school year and hopefully be able to, you know, be closer and be connected. And that's, that's one of the things that I know we all missed about the early part of this year. So looking forward to reconnecting with you all, but excited for you to get away this summer and get some rest.
Uh, some of us have to work through this summer. The thing is, I'm at a brand new school, I mean, and I don't think I'm going to recognize it. anyone as soon as they take the mask off. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what these people look like behind those masks, and I'm just like, hey, I recognize you from somewhere, <laughs> but we'll get there. Can't wait for them to come off. Well, back to Diane, I just readily know what I, how I feel about both of you and everything you've done and the people you represent. Hidden heroes, unsung heroes, a chapter and adjective to what you guys did. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you to you and to everybody else that got this done this year. So I'm very grateful. Well, thanks, Frank. Thank you so much. And you're welcome to stay for our entire <laughs> board meeting if you'd like to leave and enjoy the sunshine. I think we're going to head on out. <laughs> we'll leave you to it. This is where you all excel. It was it was a joint effort. It made it from school to school. I'm not really sure how it happens, but we made a few calls and we tried to get it around with a week's notice. Thank you so much. Thanks all. Bye. Have a great Bye. evening. Bye. All right. Um, moving on. Public hearing for input on federal grant funds to support students with disabilities for 2021-2022. Uh, Mrs. Wise, thank you. Um, each year we are required by federal law to provide an opportunity for public comment on our um, funding source called IDEA Funds um, that support our students with disabilities here in Sycamore. Um, typically by the June evening meeting, we are uh, having this hearing because we are getting ready to submit our pub, our application for the next year and typically by this point in time we know what our funding amount will be for the next year um, but this year we do not as of june june 16th so that amount is to be determined just for reference though and we anticipate that the funding amount will be similar uh, next year as of what it is to this year. It's about 1.3 million that the district utilizes um, in Sycamore for personnel to support our students, primarily for educational assistance, um, and then also psychology services um, for um, identifying and testing. Uh, we also, uh, because we are a public school district and federal uh, law requires that for religious-based schools such as Moeller High School that we provide oversight and guidance for their federal funds. We also administer the funds that are allocated to Moeller High School. And for those of you who aren't aware, Moeller does have um, services that they provide for students with disabilities. Um, and in fact, they, they have approximate, they will get approximately of that 1.3 million, just about 200,000 of that because of their student population. I think they are uh, currently serving around 80, 80 students with disabilities at Moeller High School. So we work with them very closely in, in determining how those services will be purchased and provided. So um, what I would ask is for those in the audience, if they have um, input that they would like to provide to the district on this item, um, we will be uh, providing that application or we'll be presenting a, that application within the next um, couple of weeks. If they could please just send me an email with their input or, um, and my uh, email address is here on the screen, weberby at sycamoreschools.org. Um, so that we can uh, take that into consideration as we, we write the grant. Um, all indications at this point in time is that we would continue to utilize those funds in the same way that we have in past years, which is to, to provide those personnel supports, which have been really effective for helping our kids um, be able to access um, a free and appropriate education, which is what the, these federal grants are about. Okay, are there any questions regarding regarding this? Okay. Mr. Lewis, do we have any um, public participation at this point? No. No. Okay. All right, moving on to the superintendent's agenda. Mr. Forstoffel. Yes, uh, the first item is the healthy age update. I'm assuming that's what you're referencing. Yes. Okay, I will turn this over to Mr. Lewis. 
And I think oh, I'm sure this is Weber is <laughs> to give the update oh. today. So okay. it, uh, it around. Yeah. All right. Good team effort. Um, speaking of when ODE has requirements, um, one of the requirements that um, the Ohio Department of Education through their federal guidelines that they have, and, and we've discussed a little bit about um, a new grant called ESSER American Rescue Plan Funds. And for Sycamore, we are scheduled to receive about um, $3 million to utilize to support um, continuity of services and return to in service or in person instruction for the district, which actually, um, this is one of those times when ODE has, the Ohio Department of Education has um, sent down an edict, which it was like, this is perhaps the most easy um, response we have ever had because we're doing the things that they've asked. We did them last year. Um, we are looking to be able to provide. Um, those things next year as well. So um, one of the requirements of this um, grant is that you provide information on your website. Um, and we have been doing this all year about uh, the continuity of services that we are providing to our students. So what I just wanted to do is introduce and make sure that you are aware that we have uh, met this requirement by posting um, our Healthy Aves plan, um, our Learning Recovery and Extended Learning Plan, which is a, a recommendation by Ohio Governor DeWine uh, to be able to show what we are going to be doing to provide uh, services for our students next year and return to, to edu uh, educating both um, uh, in school and filling education gaps. Those are all addressed. And then this also provides a way that we are going to continue to update our community, our parents and our community about next year. Uh, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Forstoffel have said on a couple different occasions that there's still a lot that we have not determined for next year. Um, we are still going to be looking at some of the data to around um, uh, health data, looking at some of our healthy protocols. So those decisions aren't going to be made tonight. Um, however, this is a place where our community can continue to go and get updates. If they're not at a board meeting, we'll continue to provide Healthy Aves updates at every board meeting, and we'll continue to provide the communication that we have to our parents and, and families as we make those decisions. So just really wanted to give you an update that this uh, which is something we've really been doing all year, perfectly matches what the Ohio Department of Education and um, the United States Department of Education has required uh, from our district in order to show that we're meeting those components to, to receive those funds. So just wanted to give you an update that we are meeting the requirements. And for those of you who are out in the audience this evening, that this is one of those one of those places that you can go to continue to get information as those decisions are made. So that's all I have for the Healthy Aids update. Mr. Lewis, Mr. Forstoffel, I don't know if you have anything additional to add. I, I think the, the biggest thing is just for our community to stay tuned. We're gonna certainly continue to look at the data and we're gonna continue to react to the data and you know, that's the mode we've been in all year, and that's the mode we're going to continue to do. And we're going to be responsible in our reaction to that data. So um, hope everyone's enjoying their summer. That's, you know, our hope for them right now. And, you know, as information becomes available, we'll continue with updates. But as of right now, I, I think I would, I would communicate that the data looks really good right now, comparative to last year at this time. So um, we hope that that continues and you, you know, as we make our updates, again, we'll react to that data as it comes uh, becomes clear to us. So thank you for that opportunity to give you an update on, on Healthy Aves. We look forward to our community visiting that site. All right, thank you very much. All right, uh, Master Facility Plan update. Mr. Lewis, Mrs. Weber, we, we have picks. Hey, there we go. So yeah, go ahead and go to the next slide. So we've got, you know, there's a lot going on right now. It's a busy summer and kudos to our, all of our uh, staff members um, at, at the schools. 
they have done a, a, an amazing job of really getting in there, uh, getting in. If you would have seen Sims Elementary at the beginning of this week, it was completely empty. There is not one other thing that exists in that building. Uh, it was a complete clear out so that they can get all of the work done. So, um, you know, a lot of additions. Uh, the, uh, the masonry is being done uh, on the classroom addition, uh, roof installation, sidewalks being done. The drywall installation in the new addition is nearly complete, which is exciting. Uh, so that then we'll start sealing grid and things of that nature, putting that, that information in. Um, the walls, there's a temporary wall to divide the gym uh, so that we can use part of the gym as our media center uh, for the time being when school starts. You can see temporary media center shelving in the gym. Uh, we had to move all of the building contents off site so that they can complete the summer work. Um, and really just, you know, some of the exterior work and some of the um, site work is, is nearly complete and has been finished. And um, so if you can go to the next slide, this is Weber. You can see some of that work uh, on the exterior, uh, the site work in the stage addition. Uh, I will tell you that when I went out there and noticed that like this area of the front here that was totally torn up, it's just every time you see something new, it just, it always kind of shocks you when you, when you pull in to see what changes have occurred. Next slide, please. Um, some additional, that's the, that's the interior. So it's really coming together. Um, the, the left is the new wing. And then obviously the right is an existing hallway. And you can see, you know, they're in the ceilings, they're tearing things out. And that was a big part of what they have to do is they want to get all the above ceiling stuff finished this summer. So that's why the school had to be completely in. Doesn't mean every wing is going to be finished. Um, you know, you'll see later in the agenda, one of the change orders that we're approving is an acceleration uh, item. We accelerated one of the wings so that we could be accommodating to our student needs and not have to talk about redistricting or moving students to another building for the year. And we, we felt like that would be a positive for our families to accelerate the movement and pay a little additional money instead of moving students and then moving them back the following year. So next slide, please. And then just some other strange photos and things that are going on uh, at, at uh, Sims Elementary School. So again, a lot of work being done. I'll just say, I always continue to say, on budget and on schedule, we never say we're ahead of schedule. That's, that's terrible when you're talking about construction projects. So next slide, we should be at uh, an aerial photo. So you can see that just the change every, again, every time that you look at it, there's just more and more complete. So, you know, we are on schedule for the new wing to open at the beginning of the school year uh, for next school year. I will tell you that there'll be a lot of stress at Sims Elementary because we will be working probably every day up until staff return and maybe even through staff return. Uh, the staff members will probably have only a couple of days to get their rooms ready. So um, they'll be stressed and we'll get them through it and that'll be a tough time of the year, but um, it, we, we need every single day to get that work complete. Next slide, moving on to EH Green. Uh, the lime stabilization you know, for the building pad, doing a lot of that soil stabilization, stabilization is complete. Um, working on the lower building pad, and you know, we feel confident that we're nearly at the end of all of our stabilization efforts. Um, the building footers have been started. That is one of the concerns. Um, that's really the only, I would say, soil issues that remain or concerning, potential concern is just soil issues with any of the building footers. But, I have not heard anything as of yet uh, that would be concerning, but you know, I feel confident that we've been underneath the change directive that we were able to uh, approve, and hopefully we're going to be well below it and you know, save some money on those costs. Sanitary lines, storm, underground pipe, uh, parking areas, and you know, shoring up that <coughs> information, and then uh, you'll see in a minute there's a shoring of a wall uh, that needed to occur. Um, on the next slide or on a future slide. So <clears throat> some of the exterior, you'll see, uh, you can go ahead, Mrs. Weber. So there's just some of the site work. That's the soil stabilization with the uh, lime and cement mix. 
Next slide. It was nice to see starting to see some walls go up. That's always an exciting thing when they're starting to come out of the ground. Next slide. And then the aerial photos just to see how it's taking shape on the back end of the property. And you know, you'll notice that it was a shock to me. Um, I'm sure it was a shock to Mr. Forsoff when he looked out his window and their big backhoes of his backyard back here in the back of our building. Some of the you know water runoff and, and drainage had to come back through and connect to the district office. So they dug up a lot of things along the side of the building here. So you know, we, we responded to the questions from our community members around our facility and you know, kept them up to date. Next slide. Sycamore Junior High, again, lots of similar things. I won't go over the same things, but lots of similar things at Green. They're in the same mode. Um, so we'll skip to the next slide. And you can see, uh, again, looks kind of similar. A lot of soil work, a lot of things, but you know, again, they're starting to come out of the ground. Uh, I went to the meeting last week and saw that walls are starting to go up. And again, exciting time to see when the foundation walls start. Next slide, please. Just another view of that foundation work. Next slide. And then the aerial photos. So it's eventually within about two weeks, it'll feel like there's almost a shell of the building there. It'll be quick. Next slide. The high school. Lots of demolition. I was there this morning walking around. Lots of demo, lots of clearing out. Um, the commons, if you've not been there, if you've not seen some of the pictures on social media, it is chock full of just teacher stuff and materials uh, to try to save on some of the storage costs. Uh, framing, rough ends, drywall installation. I was, I, I, again, I never say I had a schedule, but one of the areas that we started towards the end of the school year, um, the high school team was able to clear it out a little early. They're nearly complete. Uh, with the installation of those classrooms. Um, in the back, toward the back of the building, it'll be math classrooms. It used to be, I think, global language. But, you know, just seeing the bathrooms torn down completely to nothing and built back up, the brick walls are all, uh, the center block walls are already there, and the rough ends are already there. So I will say, I know this is a stupid thing to be excited about, but knowing that the bathrooms were the original bathrooms, I'm excited for our high school students to have new bathrooms. And I know that's <laughs> silly, but it is important to high school students. Uh, next slide. So you can see some of those uh, blocks, block walls and the plumbing installs. Next slide. There's the commons <laughs> and all the storage. <laughs> so, you know, kudos to the high school custodial staff and uh, our movers, uh, we worked with planes moving and storage, did a phenomenal job. They were in there. They did all that in about a two-day span. Um, Sims was cleared out in about a two-day span. So just amazing coordination between a lot of people. Next slide, please. Oh, that's it. That's not real exciting at high school other than demo and a little bit of building backed up. But any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Great progress. Yeah, it's pretty exciting to start to see uh, a lot of work being done. A long time planning and a lot of work by the community and a lot of community members to get where we are today. So it's exciting to see the work. Great. From a budget perspective, the dollars are starting to flow out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Contractors are getting paid. So that's that's exciting. It means a lot of things are getting done. All right, um, moving on, I need a motion for the approval of the change order for the 2021 district briefing project. So moved. Seconded. Multiple change orders coming your way. And I will Mr. Lewis. You're sure you don't want to handle this? Mr. Uh, first off, you're not uh, excited about handling change orders. So uh, the first one, change order at the, uh, our district briefing projects at the high school this year, it's just a drain allowance. And it's, it's roof drains that need to be, um, really that water needs to be captured and kind of ushered away from the building so that we don't have water intrusion issues. So that's the, I will say, as I, I told uh, Mr. Evans and Mrs. Weiss during our uh, planning uh, 
typically we capture these in an allowance in the project and it was an oversight in the roofing project that we did not have our normal allowance. So normally you wouldn't solve this, but in order to be compliant, we needed to bring forward a change order to capture this instead of putting it in an allowance. So okay. appreciate your consideration. All right, any questions? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Bowen? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the change order for EH Green Intermediate Construction Project. So moved. Second. Change order one is self-explanatory. Uh, we had to demo the all nine house for that construction access. Uh, number two is uh, we had to shore up that shore up that wall uh, that you saw. Uh, the cost total cost of that uh, was sixty thousand eight hundred six fifty nine. We did have a shoring allowance already built in for twenty five thousand. So the delta is the change order thirty five eight hundred six fifty nine. And it was just an unforeseen electric service. Um, we needed to make sure that the electric, ser electric service would not be impacted by the wall and the location of the wall and making sure that that depth um, where the service is, is protected by um, shoring up this wall. So um, a lot of people worked on that, but you know, getting that to that point uh, number three, civil drawing revisions. For, it's a, actually a credit of 4,955. Uh, so some of it was just pricing changes due to um, scope changes, grading changes, uh, project changes. One of the major changes and what the biggest part of the credit was, was we removed baseball field fencing. Um, we, we have much more requests for soccer, lacrosse, so we need green space. We made that adjustment. Uh, a baseball field at that location, the level of baseball field they had at that location was pretty significant, and we didn't have a need for that at that location. So uh, we removed that fencing, and that was a huge uh, savings in that, uh, that, that cost. So that gets us the, the change delta of a reduction of 4,955. Uh, we had needed some temporary parking. There was not enough parking once we threw up the construction drive through Old Iron House. We lost a lot of our construction, so this was adding construction or um, parking for staff to make it through construction. Uh, the retaining wall waterproofing, self-explanatory. Uh, we've talked about the soil stabilization in the past, and this is the total of that. So we gave us a change directive that we were authorized to go up to 300,000 for uh, the cost to stabilize one portion of the building pad. This is the cost to stabilize both portions of the building pad. So we had a total of authorization of up to 440,000. We're going to stay under the first authorization of 300,000. As I mentioned in the report, the only thing we're worried about is the building footers and so far so good. So We'll leave that change directive open of 140 for now, not to exceed, just to see if there's any other unforeseen soil conditions or anything like that. But uh, we are also looking into Mr. Mercurio's comments about, you know, do we need to look at any mitigation or any other strategies to kind of keep moisture out and mitigate it early and not have that issue going forward? We're pricing some of those things, and we'll, we'll get back to you if that's to Mr. Mercurio's point, I think the last meeting, we don't want to do that unless it makes sense. So we'll, we'll look at that and see if it makes sense to do those ahead of time. And then change order number seven is just a door size change. And I joked with Mr. Evans, I have no idea where 2052A is, but there is a door that the size is being changed to just an additional increase in size of the door. Nothing. All right. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Lover, please call the roll. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. And Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the change order for Simpson Elementary School Renovation Project, DMP number one. So moved. Second. I'm trying not to get confused. There we go. Sims up. So it's just an undercut for uh, the North Detention Pond, $5,239. It's just soil conditions that need to be mitigated. Okay. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Motion passes. 
I need a motion for the approval of uh, change orders for Stems Elementary School Renovation Project DMP number three. And you have updated numbers on the agenda. So, I move. I made the motion. David Evans, That's true. Okay, thank you. Okay, change order number nine, $1,127 is removing an existing louver, um, brick matching. Um, you know, basically, it, it's a, it was an HVAC issue that they're, they, the engineers decided they needed to address. So a small amount to make sure that that change was addressed. Um, change order number 10, B&J Electric, was to accelerate that wing that I talked about, 30,651. Uh, change order 11 is supervision for that acceleration, 45,701. Um, they basically brought an additional person on to uh, supervise the additional work that needed to happen. Um, change order number 12 is just some additional power uh, to be able to put some refrigerators and microwave power and some were basically in each of the wings uh, to accommodate uh, staff and students. Change order number 13, if you've worked in an elementary school, you understand the need for tax strips and hanging up student work. So $2,182. Change order number 14 is just some uh, changes to a couple of areas in the building, $6,454. And then, you know, $15,138. Our custodians, they, they have to, they had, I'm not sure who designed this, but it's not somebody that works in custodial or in schools. To be able to get things loaded into the custodial area, you need a double door. It was only a single door, so we had to put in a double door. So that's the, the gentleman out there, his name's Gordon Shank. I keep holding this door over him, but I guess if you approve this, I can no longer hold it over. So <laughs> I call it the Gordon door now, so. Any questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Vallon? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. And Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the change order for Sycamore High School Renovation Project DMP number two. So moved. Second. Very exciting toilet stall re re revisions. So, uh, stealth explanatory that you have to make some changes to the toilet stall. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Vallon? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Uh, Mr. Evans? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the service agreement with Rumpke. So moved. Second. Okay. Always like to talk about trash, right? Trash removal and recycling. So this is just our service agreement. It was up. I uh, needed to be renewed. Um, really, Rumpke is mostly the only game in town. There's some smaller outfits. I've priced them in the past, and they've not been competitive. So I got an initial offer from Rumpke. It was not where we wanted it to be. I thought the price increases were too much. Pushed back and got a much more uh, amenable offer. Uh, we have a frozen price for two, the first two years of the agreement and a minimal increase for year three. Uh, so more in line with what we wanted. One of the key pieces that I think is critical for our agreement that other people have in their agreement, especially with the rising gas prices, we are not charged a fuel surcharge. So uh, that is huge right now. I'm glad they did not make it reappear. The other key piece of note is Rumpke provides a $500 scholarship each year for our agreement to uh, high school students at our high school. So it's, it's a good, I always say corporate uh, citizenship is good. And you know they've been a great partner for a number of years doing that same thing. Any questions or comments from the board? No, just thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Mercurio. Aye. Mr. Ballin. Aye. Mr. Cullifer. Aye. Mr. Evans. Aye. And Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the transportation tax report. So moved. Second. We'll give Mr. Rose a chance to test this for us. So this, this is a, a request for the board to declare um, Transportation impractical for a number of students listed in your packet, uh, primarily from one school. Um, based on the following six criteria listed in your board packet, uh, once approved, uh, each family will, will be gone for payment in the other. Any questions? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Ballant? 
Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. And Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the contract with Langsford Learning. So moved. Second. This is an uh, agreement with Langsford, uh, replacement for student with a disability curve students IEP. Uh, we will notice the effective uh, dates of that and the estimated amount is $8,400. Any questions for the board? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ballard? Aye. And Mr. Comerford? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, item number 11, announcement of graduation date, class of 2022. This will be Mr. Lewis's first commencement of graduation. I as superintendent for this one. Always exciting. Um, announcing the next date for graduation, Sunday, May 29th. So mark the calendars, 11 a.m. and our high school staff always you know, does a, a great job. Our students do a great job at CentOS Center and really the staff at CentOS Center take really good care of us. So, you know, no hesitation announcing it and always continue to recommend it. We continue this tradition at Dave University. Great, that's good. All right, uh, moving on. I need a motion for the approval of the change order for Sycamore Junior High Protection Project. So Seconded, Paul. All right, so uh, pretty simple structural steel, re steel revision. That's explanatory. There are some structure changes that had to be made to adjust. Uh, 19,000, the change order number seven, tech closet. There were some revisions for a tech closet. It was determined there's an additional tech closet located in the gym. Those items were, weren't addressed prior to demo, so they needed to address that as part of the change. Change order number eight, uh, auditorium power feed. There were two panels. Um, they both were scheduled to remain in use, and they currently both currently fed an electrical room in the auditorium that is scheduled to be demolished, so there was an additional cost there to remain in use um, and avoid them in part of the demo. And then you know, who knows that we had to pay to locate, relocate a tornado siren that's on our property near the stadium. So uh, it was re relocated by Hamilton County and approved by the contractors. So this is how we were responsible for, but Hamilton County made it clear that it's our responsibility to, if we're making changes, that we have to cover the cost. So there's our good citizenship for um, the community taking care of the tornado siren. The things you incur as part of construction are just That's always right. interesting. That's how we have to continue. Yep. All right. Any questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the construct, uh, construction change directive for the Sycamore Junior High Construction Project. So move, Paul. Seconded. And thank you for entertaining this. I know this was very late and just a quick explanation. Our, obviously our bus compound and our, our back parking lot of the junior high is affected by construction. That's where we park all of our buses and load and unload students for the junior high. In order to be able to have school and not really upset every citizen that drives on Cooper Road for the next couple of years, we needed to have a place for uh, park, parking of buses and unloading and loading of students. So that large grassy area in the front of the building, um, we, we had planned for a parking of some kind there. It just was what they planned for was not large enough. So we needed to uh, expand it in the front of the school. And this is a not to exceed change directive of 48.5.3. So it's authorizing us to go up to that amount. Any questions from the board? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. And Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Motion passes. Anything else, Mr. Porter? I do not, Mrs. Weiss. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Moving on to the treasurer's consent agenda. Um, I need a motion for the approval of the treasurer's consent agenda. So moved. Second, David. Um, as you notice, the treasurer's consent agenda is, is really short this evening because the typical budget changes that we have 
um, we have an overall appropriation um, later on in the agenda. So the, the primary things that we're asking for your approval are the transfers that um, we made from our general fund to pay um, our energy conservation debt, um, our uh, certificates of participation here for the district office, and then um, as also funds that are utilized to cover um, our summer projects for um, including roofing and some paving and things like that for the permanent improvement fund. Mrs. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. And Mr. Ballant? Aye. <laughs> Excuse me, motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of financial reports. So moved. <coughs> Second, David. Um, just a few items to point out on the financial report. One is that um, we have updated the five-year forecast um, report to show the forecast that was utilized um, or that was approved back in May. So while it looks like everything is super accurate, it's really easy when you um, are able to do that just a month before. But overall, very good um, uh, performance in terms of our revenue coming in as um, we have projected even at the beginning of the year and actually above where we where we had thought we would be. Um, and our expenses still continue to be under the parameter that we had within our, our forecast. So, uh, and we anticipate at the end of June, which occurs in, in our fiscal year in June, which occurs in just a couple of weeks, we will also be under our projected expenses for the fiscal year. Any questions? Ms. Weber, can you talk to the investment earnings? I'm sorry, what? The change in the investment earnings there. The investment earnings is basically because most of our funds have come in within the last year, it's in our reserves. Um, basically, we can only invest in areas that are. Um, government secured bonds, uh, CDs, um, some commercial paper, but we're using that um, opportunity for our um, bond retirement monies. There's just very little return that can be had for any investments that um, we, we can um, invest in right now. Many, some of the investments that we had prior to the pandemic occurring um, were callable. And so often they were, have been called and we're, we just did not have any kind of uh, new reinvestment opportunities that we could capture um, much income from that. So um, it, it's horrible when you look at the funds that we have to see how little opportunity there is for us to um, be able to capture much investment return. Um, so I, I wish I had better news on that front, but there, there just aren't uh, areas that like investing in the stock market or in equities. That's just something that a, a school district is not allowed to do. So that's, that's what you see. Question, the return. My right. question is more the year over year number. Right, right. And even a year ago, we felt like we weren't getting very good return. <laughs> but um, now it looks like it was great. But that's, that's basically the reason why there's just not much earnings to be captured. I know um, Mr. Evans also asked if there were any opportunities potentially because of the low borrowing rate for us to look at any of our outstanding debt um, as a potential for uh, refunding or if anything was, any of our debt for the district is callable. Um, we do have one issue that we could look at as a district. It's one of our energy conservation bonds that was issued back in 2010, that if we wanted to either utilize our reserve to call that issue or, um, and, and just pay it off, or um, if we wanted to look at refunding it, that would be an option as well. I have not done much more than just see what opportunities we have, but if that's something that the board would like me to follow up on, um, I'm more than happy to do that. 
um, to see if there's an opportunity to get rid of some of that old, some of that debt. See if we're better off, especially in the short term, if we're going to pay this off in the next two or three years anyway, and we have a, enough money to do that. I so. I agree. Okay. so we'll look into that and, and just determine what our options might be. Uh, that, that issue, I believe, um, is through 2015. So given kind of what we're seeing from the feds and, and potential increases in rates, that's probably something that we're not going to see much at least at now, who knows what the economy will bear, but it looks like it might be an opportunity for us. Can I ask in the, um, the long-term forecast, do we forecast out um, investment returns in our uh, five-year forecast or is that flat? Um, I, I do not only because, you know, okay. we've been keeping things so short because rates have been, so, and it's just really hard to predict at this point in time. I think with our bond issue funds, they do have a projection for those because when we started that process, we provided our cash draw potential schedule to Red Tree Investments who works with us right. um, in, in investing those proceeds. So they would have more of that in terms of the draw, draw schedule and potential return. Okay. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. And Mr. Comerford? Aye. And I, I did want to just say thank you for uh, the reason for variance that you included on that. And thanks for that description. I appreciate that very much. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Mercurio. Thank you for letting me get in. All right. Moving on to the treasurer's agenda. I need a motion for the fiscal year 21 appropriation measure. I move. Second. Okay. Um, up next, we have our two appropriation measures, um, which basically serves as a spending authority for the district for fiscal year 21. That's just basically a culmination of um, all of the different, uh, the, the initial budget of the district that we approved back in September of last year, and all of those um, appropriation changes that we presented and throughout the school year. And then finally, just some cleanup work that we did as a district to make sure we were in compliance with audit standards um, as determined by the auditor of state. Um, the 21 general fund appropriation is aligned with the five-year forecast amount. Um, the big areas that you can see within our overall budget is that are, un you know, unusual that we don't typically, we haven't had them in the past is we have nearly a hundred million dollars in this year's budget for our construction funds. Um, we uh, have the ESSER grants that are included in our budget this year. We do not have the new grant um, that the $3 million grant because that has not been approved yet. Um, one of the things that you'd also see with the, the grant, um, the ESSER grant that was about $1.3 million is the full amount is not appropriated yet because we are holding about $5 million or $500,000 of those grant dollars to pay for all of those July and August accrued wages for the new staff. And um, took that approach because what it does is, is it makes it so that I don't have to continue to look at is the general fund funding any of this? We can finish out the year for those students or for those staff members um, by using those federal grant dollars. So that will not impact the overall general, general fund and having to continue to track that variance over time. So um, overall, you know, $212 million, which is unusual for us, but the bulk of that is because of the construction dollars for all the bond issue projects. Any questions? Okay, Mrs. Weber, please. Mr. Ballant? Okay, Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. And Mr. Evans? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the fiscal year 22 temporary appropriation measure. So moved. Seconded. 
Um, the 22 is uh, appropriation measure is for the 21-22 school year. Um, this is a temporary measure in that we'll bring back a revised appropriation in September, which will include our new federal grant dollars. It'll be the culmination of our staffing finalization for um, that will occur this summer. Um, we will also at that point in time have um, additional information on the remaining budget for all of our construction funds, we hope. We, are, we currently have those funds appropriated in construction for our contingency dollars for the four main projects, the uh, that Sims, the junior high green and the high school will be looking at finalizing uh, the stadium budget as well as hopefully the transportation uh, budget in this next couple of months so that we can add those dollars as well. Um, the general fund budget aligns with the five year forecast, um, but we'll be looking at how that might need to be reallocated based on um, our staffing finalization. One thing that, ha that has been helpful for us is that by having both of our association contracts finalized, we were able to show the impact of any kind of uh, wage considerations within the appropriation. Are there any questions? Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. And Mr. Comerford? Aye. I need a motion for the agreement uh, with Learn 21. So moved. Second. Um, this is a, an agreement that we've had for several years with Learn 21 in that um, we provide fiscal agent services as well as provide staffing for the Learn 21 consortium. Um, we are fully reimbursed for the cost of all personnel that we, we provide, and then we are also provided a uh, fiscal agent fee in, in return for that. So I'd recommend that we continue that relationship with Learn 21 for the next um, the next fiscal year. Any questions? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Ballin? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. And Mr. Comerford? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval for the Ohio School Comp Workers' Compensation Group Retrospective Program. Okay. Second. This is a continuation of um, a program that we've been working with uh, through the um, it comp, comp management is the name of the company, but it's a, a partnership of Ohio School Boards Association and OASBO providing a group um, rating program where we combine for our workers comp um, to be able to bring our rates down. And then we are also rewarded for good performance um, if we have lower than anticipated claims. And we have had that for the last several years being within this group. The other thing about being within um, the group, continuing within the group rating uh, process is as the state has provided these dividends and refunds, we are still eligible for that even though we are within the, this group rating. So for example, last year, we got a million dollars back from workers comp in, in dividend refunds. So um, this has worked out well for us in terms of providing those savings. We are working with comp management, which Mr. Lewis in his soon to be former position has appreciated working with them in terms of uh, working with us on claims management and helping with our safety programs as well. So I recommend us continuing on with the Ohio Workers Comp program as explained. Any questions? Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. And Mr. Comerford? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the personnel consent agenda. And this is a reminder to include addendum items 1C, 2D, W, X, Y, D, A, A, and 4A. Seconded. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. And Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to other Board of Education business. Legislative liaison report, Mr. Mercurio and Mr. Weber. 
Yeah, I have um, a couple of hot um, issues with two bills that I would like to bring up. But first, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Bowie, and then she's going to fill us in the uh, school funding bill. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Mercurio. We are continuing to monitor the um, progress of the state budget bill. Um, it has currently been passed out of the Senate um, and has moved into conference committee. Uh, so that the Senate and the House can reconcile the differences between the two bills. Um, for school funding, these are probably the two most um, diverse versions of the bill that they have ever had. In that one, the House version includes this uh, fair school funding plan, and the Senate has basically taken what is the current plan and they have tweaked it with some additional um, funding amounts and with additions of many type of additional funding for school vouchers. Um, so uh, the conference committee convenes tomorrow um, and we'll try to get that work done to be so that they will have a state budget we think by June 30th. And looking at how they combine or compare uh, between the house version and the Senate version, um, you know, we, we still remain a school district that does not receive a lot of per pupil funding. We're not seeing a lot of additional funds really from either um, of the two versions, perhaps a bit more with the Senate version. Um, and one of the things that is contained in the Senate version is um, a preliminary look toward providing additional funds for districts like Sycamore that receive less than um, the, what the parochial schools or the private schools receive. So they've done that through a, a, a tweak to part of the formula. Um, so that, that is a potential plus of the Senate version that uh, may be only kind of a short term plus when, when compared to the fair school funding plan, which tends to be better for schools in the long run. So um, we'll continue to monitor the process um, and keep you informed. One thing that I did hear today that, I, that we will have to um, keep an eye on and we'll hope that this is, does not occur is uh, when we talked about transportation and practical and the per pupil amount that uh, we have to pay to those uh, families that forego our transportation could potentially double. Um, under the new Senate version of the bill. So um, that is something that if, if the House version continues forward, it, it won't be an issue. If the Senate version moves forward, that will be an additional cost that we will have to incur. So, um, you know, just a very busy time at the State House in terms of um, the, the state budget, and we will, we will stay tuned. Um, and keep you informed, but either either form is probably not a lot of growth for Sycamore, which is pretty typical. Thank you, Mrs. Lover. Mr. Mercurio. And the first bill I want to talk about is House Bill 322, which is uh, regarding the teaching of certain current events, race, and sex. Um, the bill was recently introduced by Don Jones from District 95 and 26 other co-sponsors. That's a lot of co-sponsors for the bill on May 25th. Um, on June 10th, it was referred to the state and local government committee in the house. Um, according to the uh, primary sponsor, and I'm gonna send this out to everybody, um, in synopsis of the intent of the bill, um, the words, these are the words of the primary sponsors that House Bill 322 seeks to ban indoctrination of 11 non-controversial ideas. Uh, I'll send, I'm not gonna read those 11 to you, but I will send it out to the group. Um, but specifically, the bill does not ban the teaching of the concept of CRT, the critical race theory. Um, specifically, it says in there, it's the policy of the state that teachers who choose to discuss current events are widely debated and currently controversial issues of public policy and social affairs to the best of their abilities shall strive to explore such issues from diverse and contending perspectives. Um, it goes on to say, we shouldn't be telling students what to think, we should be teaching them how to think. Um, House Bill 322 
Um, and his words is about protecting the integrity of our education system and ensuring our students are learning real facts and not being told to feel or think a certain way. It's early stages, he's issued this. There's not going to be witness testimony and proponents and proponents, so I will keep you updated. This one's kind of fresh out of the hopper. Um, the second bill is House Bill 248. Um, this is a bill that is to prohibit mandatory vaccinations, vaccination status disclosures, um, and certain other actions regarding vaccinations, and to name this act the Vaccine Choice and Anti-Discrimination Act. This bill was introduced by Jennifer Gross from District 52, uh, along with 15 of their co-sponsors um, on April 6th. So on April 14th, it was referred to the Health Committee in the House. Um, yesterday, it entered the bill's fourth hearing with witness testimony from more than 500 proponents and over 100 opponents um, to this point. Um, and it's important to point out that this bill is written to cover all vaccinations and does not specifically pertain to the COVID-19 vaccination. In fact, that's not even listed in the bill. So we already have some vaccinations that we do require. Um, so it's interesting to watch how this one plays out. Um, and I'll continue to update everyone on the progress. So, that's all I have. Any discussion or any questions? Yeah, the only other thing, and not on either of these two bills, but I just add I know, Mr. Mercurio, you've been tracking the local report card legislation. Yes. There have been a couple um, different bills addressing that. My understanding is that. The, the sponsors of the two bills are trying to work together to come to a common local report card bill, which will likely end up in the state budget bill. So um, more to come on that, but um, it does look like after <coughs> years of the district providing information to legislators, um, a lot of work by the Alliance, which we work with, that there may be some changes upcoming to the local report card. Well, Mr. Makura, Mr. Weber, thank you for the update. I, I do have a follow-up question from last month, the personal finance um, bill or work on that. Is there any update on that topic? I am not sure, but we can follow, we can get more information and follow up with you. I, I think there was some thought that that might end up in the budget bill also, but I'm not sure of that. Yeah. was pulled into the Senate version or not. There was a confidence that it was overwhelmingly supported, so I don't know if it was going to go in or not, but I'll be sure to follow up. Yeah, I know our SAC uh, committee would be very interested in understanding, so I'd like to relay that back to them. And if it didn't end up in the budget bill, it's still in the standalone bill that you know may end up moving forward on its own. So, so can I just uh Go back, Mr. McCurio, to H uh, House Bill 248 on the prohibiting mandatory vaccinations. Yes. So, um, if, if this if this does go through and actually passes, then that would affect potentially what we what we what we could require our students to have proof of vaccination to enter school. Is that correct? That's how my interpretation how it reads. Okay, so I, I think one of the questions that I think our board should consider is whether we want to submit a letter um, to whoever that would be or, through, or contact our representatives to see what their position is on this. Ms. Weber, uh, you met with the, our alliance group today. Did this topic come up, this bill? I'm sorry. What? Did you meet with our alliance group today? Um, I did hear the Alliance um, has been tracking this legislation. It's really fairly new. Um, and what I'm hearing at this point is there is uh, starting to get more opponent testimony from the healthcare industry, from public health. Um, this, I don't believe that this one is in the House education. This is in it's, um, it's in the, because it's not uh, really just an education bill. 
um, even though it impacts <clears throat> us. So there's starting to be more opponent testimony as well. But I would I would suggest if you feel and I would I would think that our school nurses would also want us to at least address those vaccinations that are already in place, not necessarily the COVID vaccine, but the ones that have been are you know mandatory vaccine for generations because of the public the positive public health impact of having those. Um, you know already there is opportunity for uh, our families to get waivers from vaccines if they want them. So there is an opportunity if you choose not to be vaccinated that you can uh, get a waiver from from that requirement. Um, but to make it so, I, but I can see that there would be concerns that the vaccinations just aren't even mandatory and we can't ask for that information, particularly for our incoming students. Right. So do we know the time frame in terms of, you said they're having public hearings or hearings about it. When do they expect to take a vote? That is always kind of an unknown. I can say that the first three hearings were just loaded with proponent testimony. And the, this fourth hearing is the one where they finally are giving a lot of opponent testimony. So I would expect that to continue with another hearing or two, two before we got to that. Point. And yeah, I, do, I, I, I can check with the alliance to see if they have a, an idea of when that might occur. Yeah, I think that's what they would um, I would say there's still opportunity for input. Uh -huh. That's where your question is coming from. Yes. So if there is, I think that's something that we as a board should discuss. And I think, uh, you know, coordinating with other groups because sometimes there's power in, in numbers. Um, and I'm sure that they're as well. Mrs. Weber, could you follow up with the Alliance to just see if there's some thought on that? Yeah, and that's on the other house bill 322. Um, there, there's some elements within that that worry, I get worried about the cultural respective practices that we have within the district. Um, there's some elements in here that say, um, you know, the district's not allowed to teach uh, about uh, cultural practices or, you know, the racial sensitivities is the way they put it. I'm not sure how that aligns with. Um, cultural respective practices or um, DNI initiatives within the district. So that would be one too, I think, just and maybe some clarification for how that would be administered is really kind of the question. And is it in conflict, you know, with the current um, cultural practices and, and DNI elements? And I know that you had sent the bill out earlier, and um, maybe I can, uh, maybe we can look at the synopsis of this. And perspectives and the interpretations and send it out to the group and then we can huddle back up on that and maybe get that discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm not sure it's a I think it's you know how they point on it and acting it's really for the question regardless of what we think it means. Right. If they think it means something else and it's right. going to impact us, we should just understand that and be able to respond. Okay. I think we're gonna be watching these for the next month or two. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Weber and Mr. Materia. Of course. All right, moving on. I need a motion for the approval of the 2021 compensation for our superintendent. So moved. Second. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Gallon? Aye. Mr. Materia? Aye. Mr. Cummerford? Aye. Mr. Evans? No. And Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the COVID stipends for superintendent and treasurer. So moved. Second. Mrs. Weber, please call the roll. Mr. Barron? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mr. Evans? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mr. Cullen? Aye. Motion passes. Anything else? We did not talk about board meeting format, which. Oh, we'll get to that in one second. I think Mr. Yeah, you have, I do have an ad, ad, uh, additional topic if we're at the other business. Yes. Um, <clears throat> As you know, um, Mr. Lewis has been named to be our next superintendent and he will start his role in uh, August 1st. And he's been doing a lot of responsibilities of his current job 
as well as preparing for taking on his new job. And um, I'd like to propose that we look at his per diem rate delta between his current job and his future job and um, increase, provide him that increase from the day that he was um, selected or named, thank you, this is twice, named to that role until the working days. Um, I believe Mr. Lewis has been working extremely hard and his director of operations role is still not filled. And I think this would be an appropriate gesture from this board to um, provide him that delta in compensation um, for the time when he's been effectively leaning forward to his new role while he's doing his current role. So if you move on a second that. Any questions or comments from the board? This is Larry from Mother Roll. Mr. Clemmerford? Aye. Mr. Mercurio? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Bowen? Aye. And Mr. Evans? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, moving, sorry, moving back. I skipped our future board meeting format. Mrs. Weber, did you want to? Yeah, um, you know, one of the things with our healthy AIDS plan is we have always talked about being nimble, flexible, um, looking at when we might look at what to change um, anything regarding our operation. So one of the things that I um, just like to bring up for discussion is whether we want to um, look at anything different with our, our board meeting format. And maybe just a little bit of history and a little bit about the legislation would be helpful in, in talking about that. Um, first, the, the law really doesn't address necessarily whether our participants are virtual. What it allowed was our board members to participate virtually. And we have done that, we, we did that a lot at the beginning because we weren't able to convene. But really since I believe it was last June or July, the board except for special meetings um, have typically met in person. We've been in the same room, we've had a few instances where maybe one board member participated in a virtual format. But for the most part, the board has been meeting in, in person. What the question is, is whether we are getting to a point while everything else is starting to open up, if we will want to start opening up to our audience and having our audience back participating and our board members in person, as well as virtually. Um, the challenge is that if you recall, when we first started to go back to uh, our in-person board meetings, we tried having them at green. And we did that because we wanted to make sure we could physically distance so that people could be um, spread out at green. Our biggest issue was our technology was just not working very well in that setting. Um, we were having issues with audio. We were having some issues, maybe not so much with video, but just pulling all of that together in that space did not allow for um, a great virtual format. So we were having some issues with that. So to be able to go back to green like we had prior to um, the pandemic occurring does provide some challenges in continuing what I think has been one of those great lessons learned from the pandemic um, is being able to have the virtual participation. We've, we've never had better attendance at board meetings than what we do right now or our opportunity for our community to get engaged. So I would hate to give that up um, by, by moving to green. That being said, I've, you know, I've had some discussions with, with Mr. Fritz to see if there might be another option. He um, and I have not yet found a, a better space yet um, to be able to uh, engage in, in different technology or better technology or use the technology that we have. Um, right now, as you can see for this evening, we thought we might have an audience and we do have about 10 chairs set up in this room. We've gone back to kind of a different style of sitting here. So we can probably have some limited audience participation in this room. But I think we, if we're gonna go back to that, we need to have a little bit better space so that for those who want to be in attendance can, can do so. Um, if you look back to pre-pandemic, 
we have always had our our summer board meetings in this room just because we don't have a lot of attendance. Um, so I I think that we can also decide when we want to provide or when, when we want to expand our space. For our next meeting, a typical morning meeting would be here anyway. Uh, so I think if we can continue having our board meeting here on July 7th, because it's you know close to a holiday, I don't anticipate we'll have a lot of audience members. If we find out differently, we can do something different. But in the meantime, I think one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to address with some of the information that we're sending out um, either with our board meeting notice or posting on the website. We really try to clarify the public participation process so that if we do have members of the public who want to participate, they have a better idea of how to do that in the virtual format as well. So that's just kind of an overview of, of where we've been. You know, again, I feel like the format using the virtual option has really opened up an opportunity for many more people to view our meetings. It's helped us be able to record the meetings so that people can go back and watch them if they weren't able to do so before. We just have to figure out that component for those people who really would like to participate live in person if, if they want to. Um, we've heard a lot about this, uh, the board or the, the virtual option going away June 30th. That's really not necessarily correct, but what, what that doesn't mean we can't continue to do what we're doing. What it means is starting on July 1, board members will have to be in person. And for the most part, we've been doing that, doing that anyway. One thing that has been nice is some of these very quick special meetings. We've been able to just call a virtual meeting, which has been really nice. That will go away effective July 1. So I guess any thoughts that you may have um, yeah, I, I just how we say, might want to move forward. I just say I, you know, I you know I've been on the board for some time and I just really appreciate this past year that there's been a lot of community participation. And I think the virtual format has provided that. Um, anybody that wanted to show in person has opportunity to do that. And um, so if you can make it work with the technology, but being able to accommodate all the space for you know, a large setting, I, I think that would be ideal. This has been a really good year for public participation and more people in the community attending our board meetings and learning more. Yeah, let me think yeah. back to when when we had some of those initial meetings when we were talking about the following year, we had 1,500 people <laughs> at a board meeting. We've never had that yeah. and, and a way for them to be informed. So um, I do, yeah, I agree with Mr. Materio um, completely. I think it's great that our, our public and our community is being involved. I, I really want to go back to a larger facility, uh, maybe even starting at the end of July to give people the opportunity to come back. We have to figure out the technology piece. Unless, unless there's some big cost to doing that, unless there's some prohibitive cost to doing that, I really would like to see us go back and have the opportunity to can either come in person or uh, join us virtually. Okay. That's my opinion. You know, I, I understand the technology piece, but I guess this is the other question. I know we've got certain uh, procedures going on in the building right now. I think with still kind of wearing masks and stuff like that, would that extend throughout the summer just to be consistent with? Um, what, what our policy has been, and Mr. Porcel, you can chime in on this, is we kept the masking because of continuation of the school year and the summer school. Correct. So I would assume that that would be something that we would want to continue until we make those decisions for what we're looking at for next year, unless we think something differently. But we basically have looked at our policy here in the office is we, we extended it through summer school, so we're extending it when we're in common areas and, and gathering here. So I would assume that we're going to keep that for right now. Right. Mrs. Weber, I want to thank you for such a comprehensive, you know, analysis of, of our history of this year because it, it kind of um, kind of hard to remember back to when we were all completely virtual and trying to figure all of that out. 
But I do think that it has, like Mr. McCurry said, it has increased participation because our community can just log on. They don't have to kind of make a plan to get maybe a babysitter to come in person. And I think the other thing that we have done throughout this whole year is continue to have public participation in our meetings. And that's very important to our board, I know. And I think we would continue that. So if we can figure out the technology part of it, that would be great to go to. Because I think as we move closer to the school year, and as we get closer to making some decisions about some of the things we're gonna do in terms of social distancing and masking and all of those things, we know that our community is gonna to wanna to, um, be a part of that and hear, or hear the decisions that we're making. So. so Mr. Fritz and I will try to work through some options to find a different space. One of our challenges for this year is that many of our buildings are under construction. Yeah. Um, so some of those better spaces may not be readily available, but I think we, we might be able to look at Mapledale as an option. Um, maybe Blue Ash, maybe Blue Ash Elementary. So no. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything? Is there any place that isn't under construction? Uh, so well, and that may be something that we're maybe that's more. Probably the most. Okay. Uh, I was going to say maybe it, every, that's the problem. All of our buildings, besides being under construction, are in constant use. So Mapledale is a site for summer school. So you know for. Um, Pre-K, six summer school, and then seven twelve is at the junior high. So it's just you know we're trying to find space to do it. What about the um, room in our Penwood Road facility? That, that, that's that a bigger room. Than this. I'd have to look and see if we have removed. I know that Mr. Mater took some of the. We had a lot of cubicles set up there, and we actually ended up. Those were things that were donated, and I uh, will pay an install fee, but. You know, they, they, we moved some of them to the high school, so if the rest remain, we could probably have them removed, and that would be a good option. So that okay. we could definitely look at that. And yeah, there's ample parking there. And, and I was going to say one thing is, you know, we do know where we are now until it fills up. Sure. Yeah. Know, when it fills up, but don't yeah. worry about plan B or something. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's keep this on the agenda. We'll probably talk about it at our next meeting. Okay. And just one, one more point on this. I mean, the part that I had really appreciated in the first few months was having the uh, student participation yeah. and the performances. And I think in a room like this, that would be hard to maintain. So would, that may not be a July or August issue, but when we get to September, I think we need to have the bigger room option so we can have the students and their families participate uh, in, in front of the board. So. Good point. All right. Sounds like Anything else from the board? Mr. Forthoffel, Mr. Weber, Mr. Lewis. All right, 8.31, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Have a nice evening.